G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and welcome to another exciting episode of Growing Your Greens. <laughs> Sorry, I've just got another YouTuber in my head at the moment. I've just been watching a few videos online and yeah, he stood out a little bit. Anyway, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and what I'd like to show you today is a little bit around my garden now that we're just hitting into summer. It's five or six days into summer and it's quite interesting the changes in weather. Through spring we had a very typically dry spring and they used to call it, well they do up north they call it the build up. When I used to live up in the Northern Territory in Darwin the build up they used to call the silly season because people just go crazy waiting for the rain to fall and finally when the rain breaks like it is this last few days people can have a sigh of relief and they calm down a little bit well it's a bit like that here we've had a really dry spring so we've been all hanging out for the rain and now that it's here yeah a few people are whinging about storms and storm damage and all that and a little bit of too much rain here and there I, I never do I love the rain this is what fills up our our aquifers underneath the ground it's what soaks in and gives all my fruit trees a good drink and it saves me watering the garden and it saves me a lot of work actually it just makes everything grow so we'll go through I'll show you some of the fruit trees I'll show you some of the things that's starring in the garden at the moment and I uh, hope you enjoy the video well I might as well just start here behind me I've got my largest mango tree it's a Kensington pride It's a big tree, but I'll probably only get about 20 mangoes off it. And the reason for that is the anthracnose and the black spot that attacks the mangoes in this area. Now, I used to spray a fungicide over my mango trees to try to enhance the cropping. These days I've gone away from that, and what I've done is planted about 10 or 12 mango trees and I've tried to select varieties that aren't as susceptible naturally to anthracnose and black spot and other fungal type diseases. I still want them to taste good, so I have selected varieties that are good to eat, but just different varieties so that I can sort of have some insurance. And I'm just fed up with spraying even fungicides on plants. I don't use pesticides in my garden and I don't think fungicides are, are helpful either, if you can help it. So I do grow a lot of trees so that it, when I do lose half a crop of mangoes due to some type of fungal disease, I've still got quite a lot of mangoes to harvest anyway. And that's my philosophy and I think it's staying to work. Most of my trees are quite young and as, as you can see, they, uh, they might be small but they're cropping well already and the disease isn't too bad. My banana trees behind me, they're looking pretty sad. I'm going to get some bananas out of them this coming season but really this last three months of spring was so dry and nasty and winter was dry as well that they just didn't get enough moisture. and. To be quite honest, I didn't probably pay them enough attention. What I really need to do is give them a good trim back, get all the dead leaves off, trim back some of the banana plants that have finished fruiting and are dying off, and let some of the smaller ones come up and, and grow. I've given them a good half a bag of fertilizer and chicken manure and, and uh, mulched around the plants, so hopefully that'll pick them up now that the rains have hit. I'm sure it will. But uh, yeah, they really need more food, a good trim back, and my harvest of bananas, or this current harvest, will be quite small, but nevertheless they'll still be tasty. Yeah, I really got to get my backside into gear when it comes to growing bananas. I've been a bit slack the last few seasons. We've got four pineapples on the go. This one here is just about ready to harvest. He's not a big fella, but it'll still be a nice homegrown pineapple to have. And these three in the front here are probably ready in another couple of months. 
a lot of the citrus are now growing strong and producing fruit for the new season. Like my Valencia orange has just finished fruiting and that's, they go a long way into the season as I've detailed before in my videos. But it's amazing how they can just finish fruiting and then start fruiting again. This is a blood orange. It's only a young tree. And you can see this thorny growth coming from the top. That's actually coming from the bottom of the plant underneath the graft. And uh, it sort of got away from me on this one, but it's just a simple matter of finding where that's starting below the graft and cutting that growth off. If you don't, if you don't get rid of sucker growth coming from the original plant underneath the graft of uh, citrus or other grafted trees, they can suck a lot of energy out of the plant and hamper its growth and its fruiting ability in the seasons to come. So it's a good idea to, if you find sucker growth like this, trim it all back and trim it younger than well when it first starts is the optimal. But of course, sometimes when you've got quite a few fruit trees like mine, some escape you. This is a nasty pear. So they're like a, a pear, but they're, they stay hard like an apple. I actually prefer them to apples. This is only a young tree, it's probably two years old, maybe two and a half, three. It's got about 15 fruit on it, and uh, yeah, it's growing well. They have a beautiful foliage, these nashi pears, or pear trees, in general. Deciduous. About 18 months ago, I planted a couple of fig trees. This one's the oldest out of the two. It's doing pretty well. it will probably get about five or six fruit out of it. But uh, we'll see how that develops. One of my newest plantings is this custard apple. It's called a Tropic Sun. Now, it's supposed to be a new variety bred by the Australian Custard Apple Association, so it's got to be good. Well, our grapes are ready to be harvested. The kids and I have been eating them. They're relatively small, but they taste fantastic. We've probably got about 12 bunches and we need to harvest them now that they're ripe, otherwise they'll be just fodder for the birds. So I'll be picking them today, but I'm glad I had the opportunity to show you and share some with you. Mm. You know, there is nothing better than a grape off a vine just like that. No, pres no preservatives, no pesticides, no chemicals. That's incredible. Behind me here is a Guilford plum. It goes yellow as it's ripening. It goes from green to yellow. Then it goes to red. I've got it with a... There's a cockatoo. They make a racket. I've got it with a fruit saver net over the top because the fruit fly loves stone fruit. This tree is a, a big producer. It's only probably three years old, maybe less than that. And we've got about 30 or 40 fruit on it. I'm hoping that what's set now will actually ripen and, and plump up. Behind me here is my pecan tree. I've got one fairly mature one, about five years old, that's started to produce nuts for the first time. And another smaller variety that is about oh, 12 months to 18 months old. It's going to help pollinate the other tree because they're an A and a B variety, but they are both still self fertiles, but it does help to have different pecan varieties in the one area. I love the pecan because the foliage is beautiful. I mean, when you mow around it, 
the foliage touches you it's really nice and soft they're a great looking tree they have a really short growing season so they really power on when they start uh, usually in mid-spring when they start to get their leaves they power on they power through summer they love lots of water and then they have go into dormancy and they stay dormant for a long time so they're quite a unique tree and I'm looking forward to getting our first nuts this is one of my apple trees as you would have seen if you saw my um, apple bird netting video demonstration it's dropped a lot of its fruit it did have like I said about a hundred set on it but now, now I reckon there probably wouldn't be more than 20 so hopefully it doesn't lose any more uh, we did have a really dry spring so I, the tree probably shedded or shed a lot of its apples because of the dryness but now that we've had some good rain hopefully it'll keep what it's got on there the netting of course is another fruit fly prevent, prevention method uh, certain trees really do need protection from fruit tri flies um, other trees don't so that's some of the fruit trees done now let's get into the vegetable patch well as I've said many times before when you when you get into summer here in the subtropics you really can only grow the smaller type cherry tomatoes but there's lots of different cherry tomato varieties you can grow like this is a honey grape and it is growing really well I've got two plants in this pot I like growing in large pots uh, especially tomatoes because tomatoes can get all sorts of diseases and pests and build up of pests like nematodes in the ground and if you grow them in pots you can change the potting mix or change the tomato plants around or rotate the crops a lot easier and I've just made this little simple trellis hoop trellis thing with a bit of irrigation piping up the top so when the plants grow over and they they can flop down and uh, naturally flop over without damaging the stems too much here's this magnificent climbing spinach that I planted about a month ago there were four plants up this makeshift wooden teepee and uh, I have to say I don't mind it so much I did say that the leaves are a little bit sort of slimy if you have them fresh but uh, you know a lot of the people in my family really like it and the, the, the taste is quite nice here's the it's things starting to flower now and that's attracting some native bees but uh, it's certainly this is right in full sun here uh, it is got no problem at all growing it's growing very healthily in quail and chicken manure and it's a good source of greens when you hit summer in a subtropical climate when other things won't grow especially spinach will not grow or the standard spinach but this vine is so vigorous you can't run out of greens when you've got one of these guys in your garden I've still got the a bunch of larger Roma type tomatoes the plants have died back quite severely but you know still getting some even though we've hit summer so I'm happy with that I've left a few cherry tomatoes that have just come up by themselves as I usually do start growing this bed is overgrown really quickly with weeds I did have some cucumbers in here that uh, I'm gonna let now just die back and they have died back but I'm leaving these big cucumbers um, just sit and ferment for a bit and then I'll collect the seed summer is really punishing my silver beet but it's still fighting on lots of insects have got into it now obviously I don't spray my plants but there are some plants that the insects aren't touching at all in the same bed like this one there's this one and this one now it's interesting 
that all the plants around it should be getting hit by insects like this one next to it insects and caterpillars just killing it off yet these ones here are largely untouched and we've been eating from these two plants and I'm going to continue to until they really you know become unusable but at the moment they're, they're fighting on so why not keep using them uh, I can't believe kale has been going for I don't know nine months just amazing here I've got a whole bunch of rocket that's gone to seed again it's a uh, it's something fantastic for the bees and other insects and amongst it I planted a couple of these Thai eggplants that are now starting to flower and I'll be interested to see what the fruits like it's uh, it's a small Thai eggplant I've never grown them before I've got another one on this side I've harvested all my corn that was a complete success this corn all came up by seed similar to what I've done here I, I just chuck some of the bad cob that a caterpillar might have eaten or something I chuck that into the garden and I dig it in and I just see corn come up these these were all full full corns they were they're lovely to eat I packaged them up and put them in the freezer um, I decobbed a lot of them and just kept the kernels here behind it is a jack pumpkin there's two or three of them and amongst it I've got these mouse melons now this is uh, another another interesting crop that I ha that I uh, haven't grown before but it is starting to flower finally mine seem to be producing some small little melons now I'll be interested to see what they taste like this is a West Indian cucumber which if you follow my videos you know I love growing it because it's a cucumber that you can grow when you can't grow other cucumbers and uh, yeah you pick them early the fruit fly don't hit them and the plant grows nice and vigorously through the heat along here I've got some more mouse melons this bed here is, is free at the moment I'm just leaving it rest for a sec more mouse melon and yeah I did take a risk and plant some standard cucumbers these are a, a giant Russian here and a small white and you can see they are growing quite nicely even though we're getting 40 degree days sometimes here this rain and overcast weather helps a lot um, I'll probably get a quick crop out of them and then they'll perish I reckon I've got my turmeric coming up nicely again this season this fennel here has gone to seed I'll collect the seeds from that I've got another row of eggplants coming up here because they do like the warmth and uh, these are self-seeding chilies they, they're going fantastic now the heat is here and I've got a whole bed of different types of chilies growing and some self-seeding potatoes that shouldn't really be grown this time of the year but they've come up on their own and they will bring you know they will create a few potatoes and in a, a really off season which is a, a great thing here in my smaller beds I've got chilies or these long chilies that I that I took from the store I bought them from the store and just took the seeds and thought that see just to see if they were self fertile and if I could grow them true to type and they are they are just great these are a mild variety so the problem with growing larger capsicum or large peppers or bell peppers here is that the fruit fly hit them and the, the fruit fly hit them severely but they don't necessarily go for the the long thin chili things as long as you pick them well even even when they go red they'll be fine and the smaller chilies because of the heat they'll they'll uh, they won't get touched this is one of those big reds which can get hit by fruit fly but again these these longer banana type chilies and peppers 
don't get hit as bad as the bell capsicum. So what I was going to say is if you grow these guys and you make them mild, they taste the same as a bell capsicum, pretty much. And uh, they might look like a chili, but they're not hot. So you can still use them in mild dishes. Over here I've got an out of control West Indian cucumber that is going all over the place. That's how much it loves the heat. And more of these mild chilies and banana capsicums. The bigger they are, the bigger target they are for fruit fly. But if you can pick the bigger, bigger banana capsicums green, you'll be safe. Here are my really hot Thai chilies. You can see I've got another big season of these coming up. They're only small, but they're really hot and good for hot sauces. Like if you really like it spicy like I do, they're great to grow. I've got several of them and a couple coming up here. This is my ginger bed and asparagus bed. Asparagus is doing good. I had some crowns that I transplanted last season when I moved these beds to here and I they didn't come up again, so they must have died. This one did survive. So it's a fairly thick sized stem that's coming out of that. So that'll probably be right to harvest next season. These other ones are only still quite small, so I'll let them grow on for another year or so before I start harvesting them. I've got my ginger starting to come through. This rain's gonna help. Hopefully that'll grow through this garden bed and I'll get a good crop of ginger. But the dry weather through spring didn't didn't help much. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Thumbs up if you did. Thanks a lot for watching. That's a kingfisher, by the way. I don't know what he's doing sitting out there in the rain, but he does that often. <laughs>